Welcome back to Sophie and Sebastian. It's been a bit since our last story, so we're happy to share something new. In this episode, Sophie and Sebastian learn what it takes to be a great artist. Enjoy! The Artist It had rained overnight, the kind of spring shower that makes things glisten and sparkle. The world was a million shades of green, and the birds were singing. If you looked closely, you could see steam rising from the roofs of the houses and cars. But the most remarkable thing was what you could do with your nose. If you opened your nostrils and pointed your tip in the right direction, you could smell lilacs and lavender, roses and apple blossoms. And if you had a really fine snout, a nose fit for a king, you might pick up the whiff of a diesel engine, or a hint of skunk wafting up from the ravine, or the after-smell of a painful argument between a couple of cats, or even an early morning cigar smoked by an elderly gentleman in a bathrobe standing in his backyard while phoning his Japanese wife, who had gone home to visit her parents. If you had a nose and knew how to use it, all of this would be yours to enjoy. Unfortunately, this morning Sophie had a cold. She couldn't smell a thing because her nose was plugged. What she did notice was that Bert, the next-door neighbor, was outside, painting the flowers in his garden. Bert had put up a wooden frame on which he had placed a big sheet of paper. He also had a little table with a cup of water, a leather pouch filled with pencils and brushes, and an old ice cream lid on which he mixed his paints. Check out Bert, said Sophie to her little brother Sebastian. He thinks he is an artist. What is an artist? What? You don't know what an artist is? An artist is somebody who makes art, obviously. What is art? What is art? repeated Sophie. You're such an ignoramus. Art is what an artist makes, silly. Oh, said Sebastian. Can I be an artist? Of course, said Sophie. Anybody can be an artist. You just have to believe that you are one. And then you are. That's all there is to it. Okay, said Sebastian. I believe. You believe what? I believe something. Something about art? Oh, right. Well, then you are an artist. Now, come along. Let's go show Bert how it's really done. Then Sophie and Sebastian grabbed their paint supplies and went out to visit Bert. Good morning, Bert, shouted Sophie. Can we join you? Can we paint too? I don't know, said Bert. Can we both paint the same thing? Will that work? Of course it works, said Sophie. Only you can't all stand in the same spot, though we could take turns. Or, said Bert, you could sit on my shoulders. Can I, said Sebastian. He was jumping up and down with excitement. I don't know, said Bert. Where would you put your paper? On your head, laughed Sebastian. What about your paints and your water? On the ground. I would just need a ladder to climb up and down. Or maybe a really long brush. Doesn't work anyway, said Sophie. You still wouldn't see exactly the same thing. By the way, what do you think we should paint? Paint whatever you see, said Bert. You can see me, said Sophie. Can you paint me too? I'm way more interesting than a bunch of flowers. What is interesting about the flowers, said Bert, is that they don't move. I can stand still. But then you can't paint, can you? Oh, right, said Sophie. I forgot. Well, what should I paint? Take a look around, said Bert. What do you see? Sophie looked in all directions. I see trees and the road 
and some clouds that look like the three little pigs. And I see Fran through the window. And I see you and me and a chimney and... She paused. There's way too much to fit on my little piece of paper. I'm going to need a sheet as big as the whole world. Whoa, said Sebastian. That would be the biggest painting ever. The only problem, said Sophie, is that you wouldn't be able to see the whole world because your paper would be in the way. Well, what if you sat on Bert's head? Still not. You would have to roll up the paper like a big toilet paper roll and just paint a little piece at a time. Bert laughed. Are you ever going to paint or are you going to stand here talking all day? What's wrong with talking? asked Sophie. Good artists always know what they're talking about. Plus, a person who talks a lot is sometimes right. Sometimes, agreed Bert. By the way, said Sophie to Sebastian, what are you painting? I am painting an army. In fact, Sebastian had already made a good start. He had drawn two fighter planes and five soldiers. But there aren't any soldiers around here. At least I don't see any. I don't care, said Sebastian. And anyway, I can see them. Where? Right here. Sebastian pointed to his paper. Sophie shrugged her shoulders. Fine, she said. I'm just going to paint one rose. She took a close look at all the roses in Bert and Fran's garden. Bert looked on curiously. Have you picked one yet? I'm looking for the perfect one. There is no perfect rose. They're all beautiful. Actually, they're all beautiful, but only one is perfect. And have you found it? You're sort of in my way. Just ignore me, said Sophie. Remember, artists don't rush. Artists don't care how long it takes, because you can't paint the time. Ah, here it is, the perfect rose. Uh, can I pick it? Please don't, said Bert. It wouldn't be perfect if you killed it. It's going to die anyway. Well, as you said, there's no need to rush things. Okay, fine, said Sophie. Then she sat down on the garden path and started sketching the perfect rose. Soon, Fran came outside and brought them all a drink. Tea for Bert and some juice for Sophie and Sebastian. Very good, she said. I can see you all have a lot of talent. Thanks, said Sophie. But uh, you may want to tell Bert that he's been dipping his paintbrush in his teacup. Bert looked up. Did I really? he said. I must be getting blind in my old age. I didn't want to say anything, explained Sophie, because I wouldn't want to hurt his feelings. That's very kind, said Fran. Well, you have to be careful with what you say to people. I was going to tell him that he should color inside the lines a bit more, because he keeps spilling over, but I think I'd better not say anything. I can hear you, said Bert. What about it? asked Sophie. Just thought I would mention it. Thanks, said Sophie. But now I really have to concentrate, because this is the most difficult part. She was carefully mixing her red paint. Time to do the rose petals, she said. For the next little while, nobody spoke. Fran went back inside, and all three artists worked in silence. But not everything was going well. It is difficult to paint the perfect rose. To make it look perfect, you would have to be the perfect painter. The more Sophie painted, the more things started to go wrong. One of the petals was too big, and some of the red paint was too dark. Adding more paint only made it worse. Sophie was getting very frustrated. At first she bit her lip and shook her head. Then she put her hands in her hair. 
Next, she accidentally knocked over her cup, and as she caught it, she splattered paint all over her paper. Sophie felt like she was a kettle about to boil over. This is so stupid, she yelled. My painting is ruined. Wait, said Bert, but it was too late. Sophie grabbed her painting and tore it into pieces. What was left, she crumpled into a ball and threw as far as she could. She nearly hit Mum, who had come outside to check up on the kids. Stupid is not a nice word, said Mum. No need to get so frustrated. But art is stupid, cried Sophie. I was trying to paint the perfect rose and I can't do it. Then she added, I was going to give it to you. But I don't need a perfect picture, said Mum. I'm happy with anything. Sophie thought for a moment. Well, why didn't you tell me that before? I didn't know that I could paint whatever, even an army that doesn't exist. She looked at Sebastian and raised her eyebrows. Yes, even an army that doesn't exist, said Mum. Then Sophie grabbed a new sheet of paper. Here you go, she said. I painted some clouds. Can you see them? Well, said Mum, I meant as long as you did your best and made an effort. Why do I have to put in all the effort? Why don't you just imagine that these are clouds? Mum didn't know what to say. So Bert said, oh, She has a point. Being an artist is hard work and often everything goes wrong. When that happens, the only thing to do is to have fun. So why don't you come and help me with my painting and we can all have a good laugh together. And that's what they did. Sebastian added a soldier and a tank. And Sophie drew an amazing spider that Bert had missed. It had 18 eyes and looked in all directions. And although it looked more like an alien, it made everyone smile. When they were all done, Sophie gave Bert a hug. She said, Thanks for being the nicest artist I know. You're not the best, but you're definitely the sharingest. And just think, when we all work together, we can see more things. Very true, said Bert, though I do wonder what my art teacher will say when I show her the painting next class. She'll say it's perfect, said Sophie. Not the perfect kind of perfect, but the fun kind of perfect. And that's way better anyway. Because if art doesn't make you happy, then you shouldn't bother. I believe it, said Bert. So do I, said Sophie. Then everyone was happy, and there was nothing more to be said. I hope you enjoyed this story. If you did, leave us a comment or write a review. We really like feedback. That's it for now. See you next time. Bye-bye.